3B Outdoors brought to you by our premier sponsor, Spot Hog, maker of the world's toughest archery products. Well, if there's two words that'll make an angler's heart beat a little faster, it's called road trip. Today is no different, but you add two more words to that road trip and everybody in the world gets excited. It's called Lake Gunnersville. Well, we've teamed up with Jonathan Henry, a guide on Lake Gunnersville, formerly from right here in East Tennessee, grew up in Kingsport. I saw him grow up as a kid learning how to fish, and now to see how he's matured as not only a man, but as an angler is incredible. We're going to go out there today, we're going to throw the old standby swim bait, and of course you couldn't go to Gunnersville without lobbing a big old frog through some of that grass and just holding on. It's a great day, great company, and I know you're going to really enjoy it. We're at Goose Pond Colony, Lake Gunnersville in March. I'm Nathan Light. Welcome to 3B Outdoors. Well, Kevin and I beat Jonathan to Goose Pond Colony ramp by a few minutes. We go ahead and unstrap the boat, get the HDS covers off, and of course Kevin's over there pumping the locals for a little bit of information. But you can tell Goose Pond Colony is a happening place. A lot of activity, a lot of different styles of fishing, but there's one thing in common. Everybody's having fun. Just start about 100 yards up on this end of that bluff will be fine. Actually, no, just pull right in the middle of the bridge. A lot of times if I see them come up like that, I'll just move out here where they came up at. That's probably where most of them are laying at. I haven't been coming in on this from this angle either. That guy's just kind of sitting where I've been coming in, so I may be sitting too close anyway. There you go. Good fish. I don't think it's a good one. I'm going to get in there right behind you and see if I can get one too. That's a good one. No, it's a baby down here. I uh, know, but it's still a good one, man. <laughs> the first one's always a good one. The first one's that always a good one. Thought. All right. Now here, here we are. We just pulled up Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. <laughs> home of the Kings. Big fish. And we got Jonathan Henry. We're going to bust him. A That's a way pounder. to get a start right there. This what is just doing? a Bastrix. Um, this lead head I get from uh, Rodney Wright in Abingdon, Virginia. Pretty handy for most of you guys watching this probably. But um, it's just a half ounce lead head and, uh, and the biggest Bastrix, I guess it's five and a half, six inches, whatever it is. But um, most important thing I can tell you about that is glue that on there the day before. If you glue it on the same day you fish, you're going to be working yourself to death. That's um, IU Shad, that's my favorite, but I really don't think it's matters. I've been through six different colors out here in a week or two. Um, that, that, Like I said, that's my favorite. I like that chartreuse shad pretty good too with the chartreuse stripes on it, but I, I really don't think it matters. I mean, they'll, they'll bite whatever. I caught them on blueback herring last week just because that's what I had, and there ain't any blueback herring swimming anywhere in this lake, so. But I just, I throw it on 17 pound fluorocarbon and and uh, a seven foot mag heavy rod. I was just talking to one of my buddies last night that's out of town, coal angling at the FLW tour. And we were talking about how little I throw a spinner bait anymore. Used to, it seems like by this time of year, I'd probably already be on fish 500 or something with a spinner bait. And I was telling him I've caught one bass all year on a spinner bait. I just don't throw it anymore. It's, this does the same job, but it looks like a minnow. So I, you know, I don't, I don't throw a spinner bait anymore. I probably haven't caught ten fish on a crankbait this year, just because this swim bait does well. No matter what brand you're throwing, it does the same job, and it looks like a shad. Tastes like or feels like shad when they bite it. Hit it on the fall. Yeah. The first time I pulled it and started looking for the bottom again, he hit it. You know, on up in the summer, a lot of times I'll. You'll see me every now and then reel it pretty hard and then kill it. And, you know, on up in the summer, I catch a lot of them like that. You know, it seems like they like if you rip it up off the bottom and then kill it. But this lake's a lot different, too, as far as, well, everywhere on the Tennessee River, especially 
I guess I grew up fishing Cherokee, Douglas, and Boone, and, and just, we don't got, honestly, we just don't got a lot of fish. I mean, you know, we, there's not, I grew up learning to fish deep on Boone Lake. If I catch one fish off a deep hole, that's that's a lot. You know, that's all I'm gonna get. I might as well go on. If I catch two or three, it's a it's a stop of the year. And down here, if you catch 40, you just had a medium good stop. You know, I mean, and that they like to compete. So like, there we go. That's a good one right there. I don't think it's that good, but like, now they're schooly. Look how fat that fish is. Oh. The swim bait. Now I switched up a little bit. Put the old crusty missing fish on there. Good, fat, chunky. That fish there's not, what, 14 inches long? But he's fat, it's man. He's about as round as he is long. Look how short that thing is. They're healthy down here. Wide body right there. Right here, there's one going on a trolling motor, about four pounds. I'll look back here behind us. Let me get it. Got him. Oh, you got him. Here we go now. Is that a good one? That's a pretty good got, one. He's got a little shake to him. All right, on. He's sideways hooked or something. He's a decent one. Oh, that's a good one. They're still going right there. All right, I'm going after him. You, you show him. Show him off over here to the camera a little bit. That's a little chunky. Look at the belt. Oh, feel fatty. Look here. You talking about feeding up? He's been eating them all morning. <laughs> Our fish are pretty though. They're healthy and thick, green. Gunnersville typical. That's just a little Gunnersville keeper right there. A little three and a quarter pounder. Won't win you nothing but a coke and a smile. Two pounder. Oh yeah, a little schooly. Look at. You got him, too? Mm -hmm. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Fat. He's got one on. It's, it's every man for himself right now. That's a little post spawn fish there. Little one? A little post spawner there. A little post spawner. Soft feeling to her, tail all bloodied up. That's what we got going here. There's a lot of post spawners and a, a few pre spawners stopping in here with them on their way back. But maybe we'll get a big one here in a minute. Did that hit on the drop or Nope, hit right swing? there, three foot of line out. Left hand view on him. Did he eat it? I ain't gonna see it yet. I, I, he never seen it. He's I'm coming right through that. He had too many real ones. That's bad, Nathan. I mean, we gotta catch that fish. That's bad. We can't catch that. There he is, hit mine right there. I come right through his hole. He must have been going. He I come right on him, but he he kept jumping. I think he done had his eyes on a different price. This portion of 3B Outdoors brought to you by Paul Clark State Farm Insurance. Get to a better state. Cornerstone Concrete Technologies. Your concrete is our canvas. Lawrence HDS Gen 2, the fastest HDS ever. Kistler Rods, field tested and used by the pros. Nelson Outfitters, outfitting in Wyoming or Montana for trophy muleys, whitetails, elk, antelope, black bear, and mountain lion. Matthews, catch us if you can. Traveling down the road in search of bucks, bass, and beards? gives me plenty of time to reflect on the important things of life. Hello, I'm John Walls with Retirement Solutions in Knoxville. If you want peace of mind, safety of principle, growth potential, security, and lifetime guarantees, give us a call. Our reward is helping people secure their financial future and live their dreams with a passion for service second to none. Visit our website or give us a call at 865-247-OK. That's 247-6529. Hey, I'm Freddie Neely from 3B Outdoors. For the last seven years, I've shot a spot hog sight. It's the most durable, dependable, rugged sight that I've ever come in contact with. After several states and several critters later, I'm still greedy. So if you want to get greedy, go give Josh Johnson from Spot Hog a call. Tell him 3B Outdoor Boys sent you. 
or better yet, go to spothog.com and order all their products. So you've worked hard. You've got that property that you've always dreamed of and you've built that home that you've always dreamed of. There's just a little touch missing. You need a fence. Something to accent the property and secure your livestock. You don't want just any fence. You want the best fence available. Call Brown's Custom Fencing, 423-235-7400 or 1-800-249-6274. That's Brown's Custom Fencing. Well, the swim bait bite has slowed down a little bit, but Jonathan's got a backup plan. We're going to the grass and throw some frogs, and he didn't have to ask me twice. Man, I can't wait to get back in there and throw that frog through there on that 60-pound braid and watch them blow up on it and try to bring them out of there. Let's go check them out. There we go. Yeah, eat my frog. That's a frog bite. I said, I don't think you win nothing on it this time of year, but it sure is it's fun. fun. It's fun to watch them boil up in that stuff. They tug man. on it. I'd rather catch that right size right there, two pounder out of a mat, there's a four pounder right here in the open water. Frog bite. You, it don't get no more fun than that. Frog in the grass. Yeah, baby. The frog. I was hoping I'd come out and play on this thing a little bit today. You can tell when you're on Gunnersville. You have to clean the grass out of your reel. You got a big frog on. You got braid on. You got the man up front waiting to make it happen. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Start punching. Four days. I don't know if I even caught a keeper in four days. Golly. The frog disappeared. Grabbed by the tail. Something didn't. Oh, There's oh, one oh, not oh. mine in the air. I know there's a big one right there somewhere. That wasn't the bite I wanted. They couldn't get through that mat good. I don't necessarily mean it's a small fish. They just they can't find it good in that thick part of that mat and they'll just smack at it like that. They're just trying to bump it really. Like I said, it don't mean it's a small fish. <laughs> That's a big That's one, a man. Big one. Yeah. Mom. Same fish, ain't it? Can I put the power pole down? Yeah, put the power pole down. <laughs> She's bedding right there, I bet. If you let them get back down under there, everybody wants to let them take it under their mats for so long. And you don't want them to get more than about a foot up under that thing. It's going to be all kinds of work then. I like to be efficient and get all my stuff good and tangled up. I never did see one. Yep, right there yep, it is. There he is. I'll he catch that one. He... Look at that. Did he call it? <laughs> that, that, was, that was not too easy. Sight fishing machine, that was too man. Easy I told right you. There now. now, take before you release that fish, talk this a little now. Is that the male? That's the male. It's, That's only, the male. it's the only one on that bed. Now, we spotted that bed just cruising up through here. And talk a little bit about, that was your first flip. Yeah. You was throwing, a, um, you was throwing a frog, and you seen that bed, and you picked the jig up. He, uh... That's just that's all that's left on that bed, or else he's never had a female, one of the two. Um, it's hard to tell. Just I haven't seen that fish days ahead of time to be watching it and know what it's been doing. But um, it's probably a male that's never had a female looking at that bed. You see he's got it all cleaned up there, kind of calling card or whatever. But um, if you can see those from a long way away before they see you, you can catch them on first flip. And you don't need anything special. People ask me all the time what I use to catch these sight fish. I caught that one on a half ounce jig just like I had tied on to throw in the main river. Uh, we did get the sight bite one. Oh boy. You feel like we just won a battle, Nathan? I, I know we did, man. <laughs> I mean, how many of them bites have we had? I think the one I wanted that last one. That's a pretty little fish. Yeah. Look how good that one took. So he ate it, didn't he? Frog, baby. Frog. 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 Now you're from East Tennessee, you, you can't say frog. I know you're an Alabamian now, but it's still all about the frog, man. Pretty little grass fish, little keeper fish. Frog. 
Man, I've found a new leading cause of death on Lake Gunnersville of anglers. It's called heart attack from fishing grass, throwing those frogs back in there and watching those crazy fish come up out of there. Man, you just can't take it. It scares you to death and you're wanting to jerk, but you got to let them have it. And then you put the herd on with that 60 pound braid. Nothing any more fun. But Jonathan says they've turned the water on. We're going to get back out on the main lake, throw that swim bait. Good. 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 That's what you come down here for. He choked it, didn't he? Choked it, man. He chased it all the way off the creek channel there. How four many and times a half did he hit it? Ah, about five. <laughs> I've seen you load up on him two or three times. She looks like she's postponed, maybe, not healing up. Oh, yeah. Fun to catch. Here, give me a tater. That's a tater fish right there. A tater? That a boy. That a boy. 3B Outdoors, sponsored in part by Canaan, ultimate UV protection and unmatched clarity. Tenzine, outdoor gear. Legends live over the next ridge. Luminoth, lighted arrow knot. Rage, slip cam broadhead. Watson Airlock. Field Logic. Glendale Full Rut, Plano Tackle Systems, Mycroft Media and Express Signs, National Large Format Printing Projects, and Fast Local Needs. Big Dog Muzzleloader by Performance Gunworks. We've hunted all year and haven't seen anything. Maybe we just need to relocate. Hey, I just contacted Mark Slagle and his agents down at Twin Lakes Realty and Auctioneer in Dandridge. Man, they was honest, shot me straight, and their customer service was wonderful. That's just a short drive to Pigeon Fords. If you'd like to relocate to the Dandridge area, contact Twin Lakes Realty and Auction at markwslagle.com. Or you could just give him a call at 865-397-3540. We're asking people, why do you like Waffle House? You know what I really like best about a Waffle House? I can stop by here any time, day or night, that I've been fishing and get good breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It doesn't matter what time I leave in the morning or what time I get done in the evening, I can come to a Waffle House. You know what I really like about it? When I end up in the doghouse, I can always come to Waffle House and get something to eat. <laughs> Hunting is a tradition that has been in our family for decades. We started this business several years ago with one goal, to get people into the sport that we are so passionate about. Conkeys has everything you need before you hit the woods. Look into our Garmin Astro tracking collars, along with dozens of accessories and custom-built antennas to give you the edge while dog hunting. Check out our custom dog boxes, each uniquely designed to fit your needs. Don't be left in the dark. The Boss Slide is another great product, which can be found on our website. So check us out online at conkeysoutdoors.com. Welcome to the family. What have you got? That one's got just a little bit of shake, don't it? Yeah, a little bit. Are First I thought it was little, and then I thought it was decent. Now I can't catch up with it. It's decent. It's decent. You need some help? I mean, you know. No, I handle these fish every day, bud. Can, you do this for a living? <laughs> this is for trained. Don't try this at home. This is for trained professionals only. That is a good one right there. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty one. I'm starting to catch some of these regular old Gunnersville fish here today. There you go. Son, oh, that's high. a chunk right there now. That's a couple of them like that. That's a chunk. All mm -hmm. feeding up. Pretty fish. Pretty girl. We're working on them a little bit now until they turn the water on for us. What's this wee stuff? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to have to get me a chartreuse. That, that <laughs> seems to be the kicker right there. I, I mean, you know. Oh, that was how it happened. Is that a good? Uh, I'm right behind you. I'm trying to help you. Yeah, choke oh, on that man. thing, man. Look how fast that fish is. There you go. Look at the Bottom belly on that thing. Kevin Van Dam said that's a growth mark that black spot. Growth mark. That's what Kevin Van Dam says. You ever seen him on TV? The growth mark. Man. Got a real three, three quarter pounder. 
Tucker. Oh, yeah. Glued up. You've got another one glued up, don't you? Do not mess with my extra Have you swim got another one glued up? No. Another one. Those for a living, bud. Okay. Look at. Well, get over here. Look at it. Look at it. Just a little keeper fish. A little skinny post spawn keeper fish. Don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> <laughs> You the man, boy, that's all I can say. Same swim bait, been throwing all day. Just a big full grown bastrix with a half ounce rod in your right head. 17 pound fluorocarbon, a big stiff rod. Get her done. And I stole one of his swim baits and it ain't working for me yet. I'm gonna take that one back when I get this one messed it's up. It's got must have, must have something to do with who's casting it. They're hammering this thing right now. You ain't dropping it no more, are you? I'm gonna let it go to the bottom and then just slow wheel it back. Let it hit the bottom by every 20 foot. It's like a nighttime spinner bait or something. You know, you, you've had two decent fish the last two bites, so we're gonna knock around here for a little bit. If we don't get any more bites, we're gonna load this thing up and run down toward the dam. Honeycomb Creek. Honeycomb Creek. It's been a good day though. It has been. I was just talking on the phone on the way down here. We're moving from ramp to ramp. My brother called one up and did any good. And I first I said, well, not really. And I got to thinking, I said, well, I guess we probably caught 15 keepers or something. And, you know, a couple over four and some more that are close to four. And had them grass bites up there. I mean, yeah. it's been fun. I mean, yeah. it, it, you can't come down here every day and expect 50, 60 fish. You no, know? you can't. I mean, you see that stuff on TV and stuff, and what people won't, they fail to remember is you get 20, 200 of the best guys in the world down here for FLW or Bassmaster event, and, and you get to see one guy smack them. Right. You don't realize that 195 of the other guys that do it for a living didn't smack them. They didn't do nothing. That's right. They, they donated to their retirement fund. Yeah. That's right. This place is awesome, but you know it has its good and bad days. The real thing about today that a lot of people can't really relate to, man. I remember when you were six, seven years old, you and your dad fishing Eastern tournaments and stuff, you know. And now look at you. Here you are, <laughs> the guide on Gunnersville. We're down here doing a 3D outdoor TV show. What more could you want, man? Who would have ever thought? No, it's the worst about for me, man. It's, it's coming out here every day. And, and getting to do this, and that's no matter what the what kind of money you make, this is this is what it's about for me. This is all the money I need. I mean, uh, just being able to come out here every day is it's what I love. Priceless. Look at that sunset. We're gonna go up here and bang one. We're gonna we, go to the prettiest water. A lot of people disagree with me from Lake Gunnersville, but I'm from East Tennessee, and they'll see here in a minute on the footage. We're going to some of the prettiest water on this lake. Looks just like Bone Lake. So I'm, I'm right at home, baby. All right, let's go do it. Let's do it. This looks just like Boone Lake. I told you, man. It's Friday all right here. <laughs> just like Boone just Lake. Like Boone I Lake. told you, just there like you it. Go. Here we are. We're right at home. <laughs> <laughs> that was right on cue, man. Nathan will ease over here and hit this rock face here. Sometimes it'll be we'll get on that corner and then we'll go down here to the nine pound hole since there ain't no seven pounders home. We'll see if we can catch a nine pounder. I, I ain't going to be able to fish these fish, I don't think. They ain't, they ain't enough here. I'd be, as bad as it sounds, I'd be better off a bird throwing at that community hole. I mean, I really would. It'll take about 15 pounds to get a check. I think I can catch that in the community hole if I sit there all day. And then down here, man, you just never know. You bow up on an eight pounder off the bat that morning, and now I got a chance, you know? I mean. I can't reel fast enough. We caught one on jig last time I was here, right there where you just throw. Man, here comes something just for you, Kevin. Here comes something just, just, just for you. Right there. Got him on a long way. Look at that sucker, man. He's dying for a long way. Golly. There he is. There he is. Oh, yeah. Small, small mouth. Small mouth. 
<laughs> you can't. You gotta be kidding me. You're gonna have to get us out of here. We're gonna be up here on the on the dam. You're running troll motor, Nathan. All right. It's like Gunnerfield treat right here. Smiley. Big smiley. I'm telling you. Look at that toad. You can take a boy out of East Tennessee, but you can't take his smallmouth away from him, no matter what. Bro, come to Alabama. Right here is the Gunnersville Lock and Dam sign. We are on Lake Gunnersville. <laughs> and right here is a toad. Look how fast that is. A toad, Gunnersville smallmouth. <laughs> First one I've ever actually caught in my life, actually. Oh, that's all right. That's worth the ride down. That's cool. That's worth the ride down here to the dam right there. <laughs> Did he eat he it? He ate it, man. <laughs> what an end of a good day. Kevin said you should have been throwing a long A. You'd have got two of them. <laughs> wow, what a day on Lake Gunnersville with Jonathan Henry. We had two or three patterns going on. You know, started out with a big swim bait, then moved back to the grass throwing that frog and watched them blow up on it. And then he picked that jig up, saw that fish on the bed and snatched it off of the bed. So two or three techniques going on. And then what about the clothes, that surprise smallmouth at the dam? You saw that current pulling around the riprap. He's probably out there munching on some shad. Jonathan's big swim bait came by. He had to have it. Jonathan put the hurting on him. We showed him to you, turned him loose. You might go back and catch him next time when you're down there. I want to thank Jonathan for hanging out with us today at 3B Outdoors and making such a memorable day. Let me encourage you, if you want to go back to Lake Gunnersville for any reason, give Jonathan a call. If you're an expert angler, you can go practice for tournaments or just hang out. If you're a novice angler and want to learn to fish, he'll take good care of you. I promise you that. Now next week, Freddie and those hunting guys have something big in store for you. You don't want to miss it. But once again, I'm Nathan Light and 3B Outdoors. We always bring you quality hunting and fishing, and today was no different. Thanks for watching. Dean Tyron catching four pounders in Gunnersville, next one might be eight. Um, that frog bite was pretty crazy, but that's fun, man. That's what everybody comes here for, even if you don't catch a big one, you just want to see them blow up on a frog. We got seven or eight blow ups, and that's not bad for a for a day in March, I mean, how many blow-ups you gonna get in March on the front of